Hello, my name is Georgia Langlands and today we're going to be looking through the open educational resource that I've created called Knowing Our Once Local Soldiers. I went and visited the Bundamba Memorial Park and the name right on the front is called Their Name Liveth. This is the picture that I've taken myself. The park celebrates and represents the local Bundamba soldiers who have fought for their country. It was originally established for World War I soldiers, but now extends to a list of conflicts. This includes the South Africa War, First and Second World War, Malayan Emergency, Korean War, Indonesian Confrontation, Vietnam War, Gulf War and Peacekeeping. Inside, there are various plaques and statues to memorialise these soldiers, which will be discussed later. I was lucky enough to access this information online and I found this amazing document. So this is the original brochure from the original unveiling of the memorial stone in Bundamba. And this is of the digger. So the original unveiling occurred on the 29th of November, 1919. On Anzac Day ceremonies are commonly held here and that has been occurring every single year and since it has opened. If not Anzac Day ceremonies, any type of service that helps us pay respect to our soldiers. The full brochure is available here if you follow the link and you can see a whole list of run sheets, music that was being listening, listened to that day, who was, pre who was presenting what and also the names of the soldiers. This is the digger statue and this is the first thing that you see when you're enter the gates and this was the first statue put on. So the digger is a name for our Anzac soldiers and it was given during the Boer War from 1899 to 1902. Our Anzacs were previously miners and they were able to quickly dig dugouts in extremely hard grounds. It features a sandstone digger with a sloping rifle on top of a podium. Unfortunately in March 19, 2000 it was vandalized and destroyed. Luckily, the community came together and raised funds for a replacement, which was unveiled on November 11, 2000. The digger statue has a plaque on a roll that goes all the way around the base, and there's 84 soldiers from World War I that are listed on there, and they're not alphabetized. Now, there are five different categories that go next to the names, just so we understand a little bit more about their history. So there are five that are marked K for killed, one AK accidentally killed, one DW died of wounds, seven did not return, and three MM awarded a military medal. Under the digger, it reads for King and Empire 1914 to 1919. These are some pictures that I've taken that go all around the stone, just so you can see how that carries through. When we take a closer look at the digger, we can see he's standing in reversed arms, and that is the upside-down tilted rifle, and it is a sign of respect and mourning. The three flags featured behind him include the Australian, New Zealand, and United Kingdom flags. The Australian flag post creates a holy cross behind the digger, symbolising he is on the cross, which represents sacrifice and redemption for the diggers. He is featured in his official uniform wearing the iconic slouch hat, originally referred to as the slouch hat worship, and it was a key element of differentiating ourselves from the red-coated British and showing our emergence from the bush to independence. It was chosen to resemble the Australian landscape and make Australian soldiers identifiable against other countries. We're now going to watch this video. It's 1942 song called A Brown Slouch Hat by the Australian comedian George Stevenson Wallace. The quality within the video does vary slightly, but that is because it is full of all authentic footage from that time. Let's have a look. It's a brown slouch hat with a side turned up and a mean Turned up and it means the world. 
Some amazing footage there. So as we look a little bit further into the Bundamba Memorial Park, these are some pictures that I've taken on the variety of different things that they have to offer there. So they've got an anchor there that represents the Navy, a propeller for the Air Force, and they've got some trees named after some different prisoners of wars. And then we've also got a long row of soldiers from the Bundamba community that went away and didn't come back. If you followed that video on the previous, if you followed the link on the previous slide, sorry, it will take you to a link and you can watch a video that explains a whole tour and it shows you everything in the park. Amongst those prisoners of wars, there was one that really stood out to me and that was Alexander Carrington Tipmarsh. And he actually died as a prisoner of war at sea on the 14th of September, 1944. His body was lost at sea, but is classified as buried in the Labon Memorial in Malaysia, as there is 2,315 World War II casualties that are classified to lie there, because there were some bodies that did make it back and they rest there. He died during the Barino 1942 to 1945 prisoner of war tragedy and this occurred when Japan tried to overtake Barino for their oil and took hostages, treating them like animals. Unfortunately, Alexander died while he was trying to escape through the sea from the prisoner of war camp. It was said that the men who were trying to escape or survive at sea would swim out into the ocean hallucinating, believing that they could see a rescue boat or their family and drowned. If you want to read more about that story, just follow this link and it will tell you all about the story of Barino. I was lucky enough to have some great discussions with members of the community who we are going to be keeping their names private and that is just to respect their privacy. So I spoke to a committee member of the Bundamba War Memorial Park and he states the importance of the place and remembrance. He prides himself in the care taken within the park, helps with the organisation and implementation of all the services held there and always attends. He encourages as many people as possible to attend also. While I was at the park, there was another man also having a look around and paying his respects. I approached him and he just happened to be an Englishman. And I was lucky enough to ask him a few questions, and this is one of the great answers that he gave me. I said, do you think it is important as someone originally from another country to have a local war memorial? Absolutely. After all, they're the reason I was able to move here and live here. I especially see the value in the memorial parks as I am from England. Our soldiers, families and countries were able to fight alongside each other. It's a nice way to feel a sense of home away from home. Who knows? Maybe my relatives knew about knew some of the soldiers from this community. That is so crazy to think about, but so cool. I also reached out to a current member of the army and I asked him, why do you believe it is important to have community-based war memorials? The environment provides a safe space to reflect, appreciate and grieve. It also provides a communal space that brings together generations of servicemen and women from then, now and when. 
I also asked, why is it important for current and future students to have access to these spaces? He said, learning and contributing towards local memorials instills tradition in the younger generations. It guarantees that the Anzac memories and stories stay strong within the youth and are never forgotten or their sacrifices unappreciated. See for yourself. I looked up the park online and it had a great 4.6 star rating and everyone was raving about how amazingly well kept it is and how much they love the Anzac service. Take an opportunity and look more into your family. Learn more about yourself. This is actually a picture of my great-grandparents and Neil here, he was in the World War II and he actually suffered from severe PTSD when he came back and he was discharged due to malaria. So you can see online, I was able to access his letters and I was able to talk to family members. And I found out that he was continuously in touch with his wife, Stella, sending and receiving letters. He was actually informed on the battlefield that his first daughter was born. And that was actually my nana. It's also amazing to find out the other side of the story. So this is my great grandfather on my other side, and he was a farmer. And this is him with his plow horses. So he actually didn't have to go away to war because he was a farmer and he had to stay and keep the food supply up and running. So I think it's amazing to learn all stories. I've got a couple of worksheets attached that offer some great activities to put all of this knowledge into practice. First, we're going to look at constructing a dramatic monologue. So place yourselves in their shoes. Research a local soldier that died during World War II and create a character profile surrounding their noble deaths. Use literary techniques to convey tone, imagery, and symbolism and write from the point of view in a dramatic monologue ending in the seconds before they fall. Become the soldier and present to a partner in character. So this offers a great way to put yourself in their shoes and really put yourself in that time as well and practice their terminology and how did they think and what did they do and what did, they lo what did their lives look like? And you can take that into your own hands. I think that is amazing to ensure no stories are lost. In the next slide here, you've got an image response activity. So you're going to have a look at the image and you're going to write three responses from three different perspectives of the community during World War II. So not the soldier, but the actual members of your local community. What dialogue would surround the image that was captured? What feelings are conveyed? Who comes to mind? Get creative with it. Our last activity takes on a bit more of a serious note, but it is very, very appropriate. So it is a research activity that investigates the Indigenous soldiers and it teaches us to look into the treatment of these soldiers. And it it's very important because it feels like it was so long ago. But if you look at Neil and Stella, my grandparents, I actually knew Stella. And so it feels like it's a lot longer away than what it actually is so these this treatment of the indigenous soldiers could still be very very significant for their families so it's very important to familiarize ourselves with this information and pay our respects and then we can move forward with the right respectful tone you can also take a summative assessment approach to this activity. So work together with your parents and caregivers, caregivers, talk to your immediate family and distant family members, conduct research, look at old photos or medallions and visit graves and memorials. Build a character case for one of your family members and their time or role during the time of war. Create an information portfolio and write a dramatic monologue from their perspective. Finally, live it. Present your dramatic monologue to your class allow yourself to feel connected empathetic and appreciative of the past to celebrate their contribution for you to live your present and future this is a great way to put yourselves in the perspective of your ancestors and that is such an amazing opportunity and I would really encourage you to present that to your family that has helped you through the journey I think they would absolutely love it and you can follow the link below and that is a great place to get started you just need a name and date and you are good to go Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I really hope you found a great sense of place within and encourage you to find out more about your family and find out more about who you are. Thank you.